Good evening. How you doing? This is Minister Peyton Moore of 66 Books of Truth Ministries, and I hope you all are having a great day. Maximize manhood class. I miss you guys. Mike Jones, Michael Young, uh, Xavier, Brother Jerry, uh, Big Jeff, Anthony Burnell, Anthony Waji. I miss you guys, man. And um, we just got to stay strong. And I'd like to give shouts out to Big Sean up in uh, Florida and, you know, the rest of the crew up in Florida. Big O, love you, man. Um, I'm an instructor uh, of the Christian Men Network, Maximize Manhood, graduated from Lakewood Church. Uh, Thank God for John Bowman and Bruce Gibbons for giving me that opportunity to come to you and be able to teach this class and instruct you on how to be a better man. Uh, We have been studying out of a book called Communication, Sex, and Money by Edward Lewis Cole. Uh, I'd like to give uh, my uh, honor and respect to him. Uh, Let his soul rest in peace. But his son, Paul Cole, has been carrying out this adventure to reach men in many directions. So today we're going to be starting on chapter 17. Uh, and it's called the principles of investing. The principles of investing money, time, and you know your talents. I mean, your character is most important. So it talks about where it says, "Use it or lose it. Use it or lose it." These are, are not the exact words that Jesus used, but It was an essence of something, a parable of the pounds, the law of increase and the law of decline, the law of increase and the law of decline. Jesus was talking about a man who had uh, went on a trip and before he left, he gave his servants, three men, uh, something to invest, some pounds to invest. The first servant had invested and made a tenfold profit. And the second one had invested and made a fivefold profit increase. The third one, he sit on it, he didn't invest nothing, so he didn't get nothing back. So it goes on to talk about uh, the principles and how we use these principles. By use, you possess a gain. By disuse, you decline and lose. So if you possess something and you invest it, you gain. But if you don't invest anything, it's going to decline and you're going to lose. Because first of all, you're not making anything back out of it. And then it goes on to talk about to gain energy, you must give energy. In order to gain energy, you must give energy. Only a fool thinks the way to retain or gain energy is by resting to conserve what he has. You know, only a fool thinks that way. And then they come on to say the proper use of money is the is to prosper by its use. The proper use of money is to prosper by its use. Now, we're going to talk about this principle here. Okay, the principle of the parable of the pounds is that hoarding causes loss. When you hoard some, hold on to something, you're stingy, it causes loss. While investing allows you to keep what you have and gain more through the use of it. Okay, so you gain more if you invest, but if you sit on it, you're going to lose it. You're not going to gain anything. The business world says it this way. It takes money to make money. It takes money to make money. Okay? Uh, Despise not the day of small beginnings. Despise not the day of small beginnings. It's okay if you start off small. It's okay. Give it to God, and God's going to show you an increase. So, whatever you have, you work with it, and you keep working with it. You're trying to perfect it. You may have some setbacks, but you keep going. Don't give up. Because that little, if you're faithful with a little, God will bless you with a lot. Okay? So, despise not the day of small beginnings.
Investing and forgiving both have the same principles. Always remember that. Investing and forgiving have the same principles. Start where you are with what you have. You see, start where you are with what you have. I'm a musician. I also record my own ministry messages. I record a lot of things and create. Okay? So, I don't have a a uh, hundred million dollar studio, I mean a hundred thousand dollar studio or fifty thousand dollar studio, but I do have a computer, I have my program, I have my mixer, and I have mics, and I have the instruments that I need to do or perform what I need to perform. So, you know, so I just do what I need to do with what I have, and God will continue to bless me. Okay? Every man wants to invest something that will cause him to gain. Every man wants to invest something that will cause him to gain something. Every man has three things to invest. Time, talent, and treasure. You have three things to invest in your life. Time, talent, and treasure. Every day of your life, you invest 24 24 God-given hours in something or something. Okay, or something. Every time you use your talent, either as an account, a trained soldier, a pilot, or any other occupation, you are investing that talent. No matter what you do, whatever God-given talent that you have, you're investing it. And hopefully, that something come out of it. An increase. When there is a decrease, that means it's something that you're not doing. You're not doing it with your heart. You're just kind of being mediocre. So here's some guidelines of investing. You invest in people. Number one, a company is only as good as the personnel who manage or control it. A company is only good as the personnel as the personnel or who manage it, or who control it. So whoever the owner is, or whoever manage it, whoever is running it, you got to be good. And if you're good, nine times out of ten, you're going to have some good employees. Because if you come in with a bad attitude, your employees is not going to perform good. So that means that the company is not going to look good because you're not going to be putting out a good product. A company, businesses, government, Our ministry is only good as the character of the men or women controlling it. So if you come in with a bad negative attitude and you're mediocre, well, you're going to have a mediocre company. And you're going to have people with a mediocre attitude. So it's not going to do too well. Okay? Check this out. It talks about a con artist. Uh, On page 160, con artists obtain the reputation vicariously through associating with men of good character. Con artists obtain their reputation vicariously through association with men of good character. Have you noticed that it's always these con artists always going to the good man to try to talk and do what they need to do? This is why we as men have to be wise enough to detect that con artist. We got to learn their language to know when they're playing us because they're very shrewd and they're very aggressive and they're very slick. This is why you got to ask God to give you wisdom to discern people like that. It talks about, again, here we go. You're not to keep company with anyone who claims to be a brother Christian, but is a swindler. If you read 1 Corinthians 5.11, you'll find that scripture. And it says, don't eat lunch with such person. You want to avoid people like that. You don't want to be hanging around people like that. You don't want to hang around corrupt people, put it that way, because they will bring you down. And if they're claiming to be something that they're not, well, they're, they're false people. They're, they're, they're not real. So you must avoid such people. A swindler in church is still a swindler. 
saintly sinners are still sinners. So it don't matter. Yeah, swindlers in churches. He's still a swindler. I don't care if he did say he go to church or he do this or he do that or he's a pastor or whatever. If he's a swindler, he's just a swindler. Okay? When you invest, remember, you're investing in the character of the company, which is derived from the character of those managing it. When we look at companies as something that we're investing in, we have to invest into the, 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 the people that's actually running it. If their attitude is good, nine times out of ten, that company is good. Okay? So I want to invest into a company like that. But if the, attitude of a com- if the attitude of a leader of a company is bad and that company got a bad reputation, why would you take your money and time to invest into that? Before investing, number two, you need to investigate what this is all about, what this company is all about. Who is this person that I'm going to be helping start their business? Who is I'm going to be investing into? So we need to investigate companies that we want to invest in, invest in or, or people. So we need to sit down and talk about it. Integrity is the essence of character. Faithfulness is the cornerstone. Integrity is the essence of character. Faithness Faith, faithfulness is the cornerstone. Faithfulness is the cornerstone. Okay? So, we want to just make sure that we investigate what we're doing. Because what you want to do is have peace. Your peace of mind and heart is the best evidence that what you are doing is right. So, you want to have peace at mind and at heart. Peace is the umpire for doing the will of God. Peace is the umpire for doing the will of God. Always remember that. An eternal witness is always better than an external circumstance. An internal witness is always better than an external circumstance. So, we got to have peace. And we got to have it in our heart and in our mind because it is the will of God for us to have peace. Okay? Investigate anything that you do before you go into it. Then let the peace of God be your umpire for doing his will in your life. Wow. I'm going to read that again. If you investigate, Then let the peace of God be your umpire for doing his will in your life. Remember that. Okay? Risk. Don't gamble. Risk. Don't gamble. Everything that we do in life is a risk. When you get up in the morning, put your foot on the the floor, and you get ready to take that first step, you're taking a risk. You might slip and fall. Anytime you step outside your house, you're taking a risk. Anytime you go out to your job, you're taking a risk. Anything you do in life is a risk. You must take risk in whatever venture you undertake. And every time you make a decision, so what you're doing, you're taking a risk. Every time you make a decision or anything that you want to take on, you're taking a risk. But risk is very different from gambling. Risk is very different from gambling. Gambling is risking on chance. You see, when you're gambling, you're taking a chance. It's a big difference there. Everyday life is a risk. People used to say, oh, life is a gamble. Well, what, you're do- what are you doing? You're taking a chance on life? You're playing Russian roulette? I, I, you know. But everything we do in life is a risk, but you don't have to put your life in danger. Okay? Wealth from gambling quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows. You see, when you gamble, it disappears. My daddy was a big gambler. Fast as he made it, fast as he lost it. But when you work hard and you wise with your money and you're investing properly by asking questions and investigating what you're investing in, God will see that your work will grow. Okay. 
There's a reason. I mean, excuse me. There is a season to everything under the sun. Mm. Ecclesiastics. Sound familiar, don't it? There is a season to everything under the sun. There is seed time and harvest, and the seed cannot be changed. Seed time never follows harvest any more than spring follows summer. I'm going to read that again. There is a season to everything under the sun that we do in life. There is seed time and harvest, and the season can't be changed. Seed time never follows harvest any more than spring follows summer. Okay. That's, that's great the way they put that. There are seasons in our lives also. Seasons to sow, seasons to reap. Only a fool will try to harvest in springtime. Hmm. Knowing the seasons in life, when the time has come to sow by investing, or to wait is vital to being able to reap the increase. That's where patience comes in. Okay? God's word tells us to be Instant in season, out of season. Be instant in season, out of season. So we got to be prepared either way. So when you when you when you're out of season, you know what you need to be doing. You need to be studying the word of God. So when the see time comes and somebody call you, you're ready to go. See, I don't wait until somebody calls me to start studying. I study when they're not called. So when they do call me, I'm ready to go teach the word. Okay? So you got to be prepared. You got to be consistent. Even in your manhood, you got to be consistent. God's word tells us to be instant in season and out of season. Okay? Our consistency in our relationship with the Lord will cause us to recognize our seasons of sowing, waiting, or reaping, or keep us from regarding a gamble as a risk. A wise man respects the season of his life and refuses to invest when out of season on a gamble. So you got to refuse that. You just can't do it all the time. There's a time and a season for everything. Okay, let's keep going. It must be in writing. This is something that my wife is very good at. My wife is very good at uh, writing information down. And she's trying to get me there. And sometimes I get a little upset because my pride kick in. So I don't need to write that down. I remember that. She said, no, you need to write down name, dates, time, who you talk to, and the reasons that you talked to them, and what was the outcome of the conversation when y'all finished. Because this is what can happen. Misunderstanding is the tool of the devil. You see, we can misunderstand a lot of things. And then it'll cause a lot of confusion because we didn't write down what we needed to. Okay? Impatience is the tool of the flesh. And then we become impatient. There's something in the Bible that I, I noticed that Saul didn't write down anything. David did. That's how come David has so much in the Bible. Of his writings. Okay. Friends can become enemies through misunderstanding. If we don't pay attention and, you know, just take information down and write it down, very important things. I'm not talking about things to hold against somebody, but very important things. Uh, we won't have confusion later on about the date, time, how much money that you lent them or that you owe them or whatever. Have something to backtrack on. If it isn't in writing, it doesn't exist. Uh-oh. If it isn't in writing, it doesn't exist. People miss God's best through impatience and lose God's best through misunderstanding. Best through misunderstanding. So it's best thing to do is write it down. Because if we do not write it down, we're going to have big misunderstanding and we're going to cause a friendship to be lost or a relationship. Trust is the basis of friendship, but a poor memory undermines the trust. Trust is the basis of friendship, 
but a poor mind undermines the trust. The Bible teaches us reliable communication permits progress. Reliable communication permits progress. You never invest in anything that is not spelled out on paper and signed a reliable communication. So, you don't invest in anything, you don't invest your money or time into anything unless it's wrote down that you could read what it's saying and what it's about. Even the fine print. That's where a lot of people get lost at. A lot of us men, we get a little stubborn and we don't want to do that. We don't want to write things down. We don't want to read things. We just want to go into it. Just because somebody told us it's, it's, it's good. We believe that it's good and then come to find out it's not good. Okay? God's kingdom rests on covenants. Covenants are agreements. Satan's kingdom thrives on misunderstandings. God's kingdom rests on covenants. Satan's kingdom thrives on misunderstanding. Satan always wants us to misunderstand things. God wants us to come in agreement because that's what he has done with us, came in agreement. You see, Satan, you see, leaving room for misunderstandings is leaving room for the devil. Understanding, like agreement, produces power. Leaving room for misunderstanding is leaving room for the devil to enter. Understanding like agreement produces power. Misunderstandings like disagreements redu- results in powerless, in, in powerless areas. You become powerless. You don't have any power. Okay? God put his word and his agreement with us in writing in the Bible. God put his word and his agreement with us in writing. And he spoke it. And it was inspired. And through men, it was written. Learn to put yours in writing as well. Never leave room for misunderstanding. Write it down. Dates, time, name, how much you owe, how much I owe you. What's the, what's the solution? You know, we need to know everything down to the root. To the tutti, as we say. So just make sure that we get to start doing that. I mean, if you're not doing that, it's okay. Put your pride down, start doing it. I've had to start doing it. My wife reminded me to do it. Okay? It's okay. Don't live with death. If you lose an investment, bury it. Men who have failed and refused to try Again, live with death. Bury it. Let it go. If you lose something, let it go. Can you go regain it? No. Can you start over and figure out what the mistakes was that was made? Yes. Is everything going to be perfect? No. Can we work toward perfection? Yes. Anything in life. Do not let your past bring you down. Do not let your past help you die. We want to live. So bounce back. You fail. Get up, dust it off, bounce back. Okay? Put yourself around people that know about the areas that you're trying to invest. Put yourself in positions to know, look, I want to improve my marriage. I don't want to fail marriage. So you got to put yourself with strong people. Okay? If you lose someone in life or whatever, don't, we're going to, our flesh and our feelings are going to mourn. We're going to mourn. But there comes a time where you got to get up and say, okay, that was then. I loved that person. I was in love with that person. But I got to keep going because I know God just don't want me to stay in bondage. Okay? Bury your, bury your past failures, not the talents you still have. So whatever happened, you bury, bury the failures. But your talents still got to live. Admit your losses. Learn from it. Then go on to better things. Don't carry your past mistakes like a dead carcass. Don't do that. Don't do that. Paul wrote, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this dead. Okay? Paul said that. Okay? So we just got to keep going. 
Jesus came to give us life and give it more abundantly. That's what God did. He don't want us to. That's what Jesus Christ did. He don't want us to 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 live in bondage. He wants us to live in freedom. Okay. You don't need to live with death. Investing produces what? Investing produces. That's what it does. It produces. But you got to investigate it. You got to know what you're doing. The parable of pounds, what it's saying here, uh, it teaches us a very another important truth. The man who does the least talks the most. Uh-oh. The man who does the least do the most talking. There are a lot of people I know, boy, they can talk, 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 but they don't produce nothing. They don't produce nothing, just a lot of talk, just a lot of lip work. Okay. Doers don't waste time or cover their deeds with conversation. Doers go out and get it. Invest your time with men who inspire. Invest your money with men who produced. Invest your talent with men who create. Iron sharpens iron. Surround yourself with those who sharp who those who sharpens sharpness of mind and character will sharpen your own. Surround yourself with those whose sharpness of mind and character will sharpen your own. So you want to put yourself around people. Don't put yourself around fools. You want to put yourself around good people, people with wisdom. Don't be fooled by men who talk. Invest in men who produce. Okay? Shadows are more furious than reality. The shadow look fiercely dangerous. Dangerous. You need to avoid them at all costs. The shadows look fiercely dangerous. And I say again, you must avoid those shadows. The shadows are what we think others are thinking and what we think others will do. We avoid confrontation for fear of what will happen. This is why a lot of people don't want to sit down and discuss a lot of things. So we'll we'll avoid the confrontation for fear of what might happen. I've, I've, I've had that experience with my daughters. They don't like to sit and talk about things that because they're afraid that it's something going to come out of that that's going to be hurtful. Well, you have to let it out. You have to let it go. And I'm talking about important things that causes relationships to separate. Okay? So a lot of people avoid that. You need the light from God's words shed on your path to free you from that shadow. Don't avoid reality by being afraid of the shadow. Fear was the result of guilt in the life of Adam in the Garden of Eden. And it goes on to say, perfect love casteth out fear because perfect love has no guilt. Men who borrow and do not repay suffer from guilt. Men who promise God and do not keep their commitment suffer guilt. Men avoid those toward whom they feel guilty, whether man or God. Society is full of men like that. At one time, we classified these men as Christians, and we have Christian men like that, who still profess faith out of how long they've been in church and what they have done, how much tithes they've paid. But at the end of the day, they uh, have some fears. They, they, they have some guilt. They make a lot of promises, do a lot of talking, but they're not producing anything. Okay, guilt casts the biggest shadow. Guilt is a killer. Believe that. The only way to be free from another person's guilt is to forgive him. The release through forgiveness frees you from his guilt. Why carry someone else's guilt in your life? Free yourself. Forgive and live free. Get rid of that shadow. They are more furious than reality. Seek God's view of what is happening because 
it is truth and reality. Funds come from friends. So we want to be good. We want to be nice. Never abandon a friend, either yours or your father's. Then you won't need to go to a distant relative to, for help in your time of need. Never burn the bridges because you never know who you might have to go back to to get help from. Okay? Be good to friends because you know what? Be, have a good relationship even in business uh, with people because you never know who you might need to borrow money from. And as long as you pay them back and you're doing it in a timely manner, they'll be glad to help you. And even in business, it talks about repeat business comes from those who feel friendly. If people feel comfortable with you, you will have repeat business. You will have repeat business if people feel comfortable with you with what you're doing. Okay? An investment to make a friend will be greater dividends than any company. An investment to make a friend will pay greater dividends than any company. So, hey, be nice. Just be nice. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of unrighteousness mammon, that is deceitful richness, money, possessions, so that when it fails, they, those you have favored, may receive and welcome you into the everlasting habitations of their dwellings. So, just be nice. Because you never know who you might have to go to to borrow something from. Or you never know who you might have to go some, to to do business with. And you want to keep a great relationship and friendship with them so your business can continue to grow. And you're giving them good products. Okay? Because the lack of friendship causes lack of funds. And a lack of funds can part the best of friends. Making friends of clients and customers by serving them will ensure you that you will have funds. Servicing clients builds business. Servicing congregations build churches. Servicing family members build relationships. Invest life. Invest your life for your greatest good. Invest your life for your greatest good. Okay? Any investment you make is always an investment of yourself. Investing time is investing yourself. Investing talent is investing yourself. Investing your money is investing yourself. So, in return for giving your life at your work, you receive money, right? What you do with your money reveals what you do with your life. Your money represents your life. So, it's how you handle it and what you do. Okay? All right. Men without an investment is eternity is eternity do not tithe okay to the Lord's house so men without an investment do not tithe to the Lord's house okay hmm. how much of a man's life is invested in the kingdom of God is revealed by his investment in the offering plate he who loves little gives little he who loves much gives much. So there are men that don't even tithe. So what do you expect for God to return to you? God said, only give me 10%. And if you can give more, you do that. But in return, God's going to bless you over and abundantly. The more time you give God, the more time you have for yourself. The more time you give God. Time. We're not talking about money. We're talking about time now. And then everything else follows. A relationship with God. You have a relationship with God, God's going to bless you. Because you're listening to what God is telling you through his word and through those that he's put in your life to give you his word. Okay? And that's even true with marriage. The more time you spend with God, the more time God will teach you how to be a better husband or a better father. The more you give, the more you get. You know how much Christ loves by how much he gave himself. He died on the cross for us. He gave his whole life. He gave us his all. His giving all, you know. 
He is completely trustworthy. You can invest your whole life in him and know that the investment will reap dividends from now through eternity. Okay? So invest into Christ and you're going to see a great return. Invest in a such a way that you will receive the increase in your relationship with your wife, your children, your church, your job, and your community. Don't invest in what will make someone else rich or provide a good reputation for someone you don't even know. So why keep making other people? Invest in yourself. But first of all, invest your life in Christ. Okay? Invest in what you know is good and right in your own life and your own sphere of understanding. The more you give, the more you get. Invest your own life. Investing your own life will always be your greatest investment. Investing your own life to God, as I said. Investing in the kingdom of God is the wisest investment you will ever make in your life. Okay? Now, when we talk about that, we're not talking about you having to, you know, you don't give your stimulus check to no church. No. You, you take care of what you need to take care of at home, and then you... Say, I'm going to bless the church with this, and I'm going to bless somebody else with this here. But I got to, you know, make sure that I got to take care of home for because that's what God wants me to do. I want to make sure I have my rent paid, my light bills. I got food in my house and clothes on my back. And my car note is paid for transportation. My insurance is paid. Okay? Now, don't quit. Never, 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 ever, ever, ever quit investing in yourself. But number one, invest in God. Seek ye first the kingdom is what we should do in order to have the life that we want to have. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I hope you all enjoyed today. And uh, may God bless you and may God keep you and just continue to go on. That was chapter 17, the principles of investing.